Hello, today I'm going to be making a sea serpent. My plan is to try and put it in a rock as sort of a mini sculpture. So we're going to have a head, then a U for the body, and then a tail coming out of the back. And I was thinking about sort of the texture that I want on the skin of the serpent and whether I was just going to leave the bar smooth or put a hammered texture on or do the texture that I do on sort of the bark of wood. And I think the bark texture is the one that I'm going to go for as that gives more depth really than any of the others. It, I think it wants texture rather than just being smooth as the U shape in the middle would just be a U if it didn't have a bit of texture and we can twist it as well to give sort of a twisting on the body of the serpent which I think is going to look cool. To do that texture I've got this swage which I've shown loads of times. I actually made this in a video as well. Um, so we can use this to put, it's just got chisel lines in there and so that then puts a nice texture on the bar that we then put in between there. And I think with the head I'm going to have to put the texture on first before forging out the head as if I do it that way round we can have the texture flowing into the head whereas if I do it try to do it after we forged it out the head's going to be sitting here and so we're going to have a, a section of bar where there isn't going to be a texture and then there suddenly will be so I want to put the texture on first then make the head and for the head I'm going to be doing a dragon's head so I've done videos on making this before and I think, you know, a, a dragon's head will fit as a sea serpent's head. Um, this is just a bottle opener that we've got this on, but I just wanted to show you what I'm trying to make. And I wanna, I'll go into a little bit more detail in this video on how I make this head. Um, whereas I, I have done a video on it, on it before, like I said, but I'll show you some of the, the tools in a bit more of a close up so you can see what's going on a bit better. I think the first thing to do is to put a bit of texture on the head bar, then create the step down for the horns. We'll let that to cool down, so we can then come in with the angle grinder to cut the horns. Um, and whilst that's cooling down, we can forge out the the U-shape piece. It's sort of gonna be a bit of a Loch Ness, Nessy ty type of sea monster with a, a head, a U and a tail. But I think it's gonna be interesting. Um, so. Let's get a piece of 12 mil round heating up in the fire and then we can start on the head and then move on to the body. So we can come on the near edge and section off some material for the horns. I like quite a stubby face on these uh, dragons or we're gonna call it a sea serpent here. Um, so I don't wanna take too much material for the horns. So I'm only taking about half an inch, which we'll then draw out when we draw down the tapers on the horns and so we'll probably end up with a length of about an inch and the face is generally about an inch long so they'll be in proportion to each other 50 50. but as i said before i leave this to cool down and then cut the horns with an angle grinder and that's so that we can uh, leave a nice clean cut whereas if we do it hot we're always going to get a sloped edge which we then need to file back down so we're losing material when we file those back down to then forge out. As if we were to leave a, a diagonal cut on the edge, we're then forging a rhombus. And so steel doesn't like to be forged as a rhombus with those nasty diagonal edges on. I put the spring swage in this smaller anvil as that's what it, it's made to fit in. And there's a little peg that goes through the hardy shank so it really clamps down so it's not going to move anywhere. And there we go, a bit of texture on that. So I'll leave this to cool down and then we can cut the end. So whilst it is cooling down, we can work on the U shape or the, the body of the serpent. This U-shape is going to be the main section of the body that we're going to see. And so this animal being a natural animal, I want it to look natural. And so if we were to just bend a bit of 12 mil round, it sort of doesn't look like a natural thing, as it really should have a nice 
taper, just very slight, or at least in my mind, I think that's going to make it look much better, much more flowing, and much more natural. So I'm going to put a slight taper on a piece of 12 mil round, only from like 12 mil to maybe 11 mil round. So it's it's very slight. You probably won't really notice it, but I think it's important to sort of add a nice flow to the piece. I'm going to put a slight twist on this section of the sea serpent. And I'm just doing it with a pair of tongs, then it's the easiest way. So I'll bend this into a U over the horn. And I want to leave a bit of a straight section on the end, which is what's actually going to go into the rock. This is now cooled down so I can split it with the angle grinder. So it's knocked the horns apart. And then taper them out. So I can put a twist in these horns. I do a reverse twist. So the first section I twist out and then I twist it back in. So now back in. and bring the horns together. So I've got a nice short heat, and I've pumped about half an inch in the vise. Make a round, go around for the first bend, we can close that up on the anvil. What I want to do is to seal these sides and so you can see that we have two round bars coming together. So we have a valley in between our bars. And so if I were to forge weld this, we'd still have a line there, or it would require a lot of forging to get rid of that seam. To get around that, I just weld it shut. So I weld both the sides. Then we come back at a high forge welding heat just check the sides back, planish them all back, making it nice and solid, and then we can forge in the rest of the face. The sides are welded shut, and I've come over to this medium-sized anvil, as we have this really nice sharp edge, which isn't always something that you want, but I do want it for this, as a, we can use it to create that first step down into the material, which is where we then put the eyes on the face. gradually put the first taper on the end of the face before we come back and make that set down.
come on the diagonals as well. And then clean it up. And that is our basic preform of the head done. So these are all the tools that I'm going to use for the facial features. And a lot of people have asked to see sort of close-ups of these tools. So that's what I'm going to show you now. The first tools I'll use are these two. So I'll use this sort of center punch to get the nostril set, and then this one to widen them out. You can see that's a much steeper angle than this one. So this one is going to really make some wide nostrils. The next tool we'll use is this one for the eyes. This is basically just a hemisphere with a nice sharp edge around the sides. And so we can drive that in and push the material out for the eyes. Then I've got this, which is for the mouth. So this is a curved chisel. And this is what makes the animal heads look happy, which maybe isn't something that we want on the serpent's head. But we can put this in to make it a wide opening or a mouth in the piece. And then I'm thinking maybe I might put a tongue in the mouth. So a tongue is then going to come out of the mouth. I think that might be quite cool. But that's to do after we forge the head. This tool is basically just a really big eye tool with then a section cut out. And this is for the eyebrows. So I do a double eyebrow on the dragon's head or this is going to be serpent's head, whatever you want to call it. Um, so that's what this is for. And it's got quite a steep bevel on the outside. Then a simple just curved chisel to split the horns. The final tool is this really fine pointed center punch, which I use for the pupils. And so it's a really narrow end and that's so we can get in there under the eyes and dot the pupils. So if we come on and get the nostrils set first. Widen them out. I'll get the mouth and the eyes just marked at this colder temperature. And that's so that I can feel it with the chisel when it's hot and it just means that I can save a bit of time as it's coming out of the fire and then I can just get straight onto forging in those features. Let's do the mouth first. Now move on to the eyes. So we've got the front of the face done with the eyes, nostrils, and the mouth. I'll use these scrolling tongs or pliers just to bend the horns out. Then we can run down there with the chisel and then put our double eyebrows on. Spread the horns a bit. So the last thing is to shape the horns and dot the eyes. So I like bending the horns in at the reverse twist and then just flicking the end back out. So in at the reverse twist and then the end back out. Now we can dot the pupils and I'll do this at a nice lower temperature. And that's our finished head and you can you can sort of see, I don't know if you can see on the camera really, but where the texture is nice and it flows into the back. Whereas you see, if we were trying to texture this now, we would only be able to get up to where the horns are. Or even if we bent the horns out of the way, we'd only be able to get up to there rather than the texture actually flowing in, into the back of the head there. It looks, I think, much better this way, the texture flowing all the way in. So we've got to put a bit of shape into this. Obviously, it's not just going to be coming out at this rakish angle out of rock. So I'm going to put a bit of a loose swan neck into the piece and then maybe see if we can put a, a tongue into the mouth. I've quenched off the head and the horns so we don't bruise that as we're now putting in this bend. You can even come on and use a rawhide mallet.
So I'm going in with a little piece of four millimeter round bar, and that's to create a bit of a flat spot in the mouth so that we can then drill a hole and we can then put a piece of four millimeter round bar into the mouth for a tongue coming out. And so this is something that Bill Carter mentioned to me a long time ago. He said that this was something that he would sometimes do with his dragon's heads is put a tongue coming out of the mouth. And Bill Carter taught me a lot about blacksmithing and making animal heads in particular, the ram's heads. His dragon heads are slightly different to mine from the ones that I've seen him make. Um, but yes, this was something that he told me about. And so I, I figured I should try and have a go at doing it on this dragon's head. So I'll leave this, or serpent's head, is, if that's what we're calling it. I'll leave this to cool down and then we can drill the hole and hopefully try. I'm going to try and cut a thread on both so we can screw the tongue in, but we'll have to see if that's going to work. There we go, we've got a nice deep hole in the mouth. My plan now is to try and take a four millimeter tap, M4 tap, and thread a hole. It may just not work, <laughs> but I have drilled quite a deep hole, so we should have a bit of clearance on it. So hopefully we can actually cut some threads in there. I can't use a tap as I'm gonna hit this bar. So I'm going to have to try and do this with a drill, which let's see how many of these taps I'm going to snap. I've got three, but hopefully I'm not gonna snap all of them. And you wanna go in and then back with a tap so you break off the chips. It's a bit hard to do with a drill like this. didn't even snap a single tap. That's very surprising. Right, well, we seem to have some threads cut in this. So we've now got to cut some threads on this little section of four mil bar, thread that in and see if it's actually gonna stay in the mouth. I'm gonna use this piece of four mil. So it's a, a bit longer than that other piece of four mil steel. And I've flattened the end that's so I can get it in the vise now, whilst we're cutting the threads and it's not gonna spin in the vise, but also so I can then screw it into the mouth. I don't think I've ever cut a four mil M4 thread on anything. So this is a first for me. And you see I'm going forward a turn and then back half a turn and that's just to break the chips off so we don't snap our die there. Let's see if this is actually going to thread in. It's not going anywhere. It's pretty cool. It's obviously very long at the moment. I don't actually want a tongue that long, I don't think. Um, but we've got to flatten out the rest of this bar. This may be a mistake, but I'm going to try and do it cold. So we'll see if I can do this without messing up all the threads and making it come loose. I think I'm going to leave the length on it. I quite like it. Um, we can always cut it back after anyway, if I, if I decide not. But I want to put a bit of a bend in it, so I think we'll have it coming, I don't know yet, coming down and then out again, probably. I'm liking the look of that. Pretty cool. We've obviously, I'm gonna file sort of a fork onto the end. Uh, I think that's probably the next thing to do. So I'm going to try and do this with a triangular file. Just on the point of the file to separate out these two forks.
So I think this piece is now done. We've obviously got to cut it to length before we put it in the rock, but we can move on to making the tail. For the tail, I'm going to be using a piece of 16 by 16 millimeter square bar, but I want some more mass on the end to then spread into the tail. And so I'm going to have to come and upset the material so we get it thicker. There's more mass on the end of that bar now, so I'm going to come over the far edge of the anvil and section off sort of a cubing material, maybe a little bit more than a cube, and then begin to draw down for the tail, or the, the sort of section of body before where the fin of the tail is going to be, is that section, the cubing material, we're going to spread into a fin, a bit like a whale's tail, but I want to do it slightly differently. Um, so we can begin to section off the body of the tail and then spread the lump of material for the fins on the tail. I've left it thicker here than it is here, so it's thinner in the middle. And that's so that it, if this is gonna bend, it's gonna bend in the middle. Therefore, whilst we're forging and spreading this material out into the fins of the tail, we don't run the risk of it bending here in this corner, forming potential stress fractures, cold shuts, cracks, which could lead to the, the, the lump of material there or our fins falling off. So it's thinner here than it is here. So hopefully we can now spread this material without forming any stress fractures in the corners. I've got this hardy block, which has this tapered sort of cone imprinted in it. And so with this lump of material, I'm going to come and I'm going to forge down into that hardy block. So hopefully we can retain a bit of the, the roundness of the tail into the fins, which will give it a bit more strength, but I think it'll look better as the tail then flows away into the fins. And so we can spread the material a bit on the hardy block and then we'll have to do it on the face of the anvil. But this is really just to keep that central spine in the tail. I think that's working pretty well. I'll go a bit deeper as it is still really thick. But you also saw that I was working it on the actual stem there as well. So we end up with a nice transition going in. But I think that's looking pretty cool actually. I put a slight relieve on this back edge here before it was really sharp. And the fear there is that that sharp corner will dig into the steel. So having a nice radius is going to prevent that from happening. And, and I thought that that was just something that I, I should change on the tool before we go too far and end up putting some nasty lines in the steel. So a nice relieved edge in all of these corners are really radiused off and nice and relieved. Now we've got that preform of the tail sort of coming into the fins, we can use a cross peen to spread that material either, either side, giving us a, a more width for the fins. And now sort of taking a policy of just spreading the material as wide as possible so we've got excess material and then I can come in with a grinder to shape it all as it, it would be quite a hard shape to forge out at the anvil. So I'm basically going to move the material too far and then grind in the profile afterwards. So we've got to work on this taper. So we can now try and neck this material in a little bit more sort of here. So we have it going from uh, thick 
to thin rather than thin to thick and then make it all octagon round then put the texture on I've roughly drawn on these lines and this is what I'm going to use as my my guide really to to grind in and rough this profile out and then we could put a slight bend in it so it's a bit more natural rather than just being straight and then that's the tail done I've got a nice polish on all the pieces and I've cut them to length. I've polished them off camera just with one of these angle grinder attachments, you know, a wire wheel. And I think that's gonna be a, a nice finish, a polished finish. And it sort of has brought out, you know, it's highlighted where the highs are and then the valleys in our texturing is a bit darker. You can see it's on that piece a bit. Um, and I think that's going to be a better finish rather than just getting it all a, a oil finish, which would make it all sort of the same colour in black. I think doing a more polished and highlighted finish is, is better for this. We're ready to drill the holes now into our stone. Hopefully we can get this all set up right and just drill some holes. This one is going to be a little bit tricky as we haven't got much wiggle room in between the points. So I've sort of got to get those holes perfect so that this just slides in um, which may be a bit tricky but let's have a go I put some tape surrounding the holes so hopefully if we have any spillage of the um, epoxy it's not going to mark up the rock too much as it can be quite hard to get rid of. Um, I've also mixed up some epoxy and I've put a little bit of the dust into it to hopefully colour it the same colour as the rock um, if we do have any spillages. I am liking the dragon's head, or in our case, a sea serpent's head with the tongue coming out of the mouth. I really think that's a, a cool touch to, to add to the animal head. I think that's really nice. And I don't, I think the way that I did it with the threads and threading the tongue in, that's going to be sort of the cleanest looking method. As if we try and weld the tongue in or try and forge it out somehow with the material that we already have in the head that's gonna be, I think, a much messier way. Whereas this way we can have the bar going right in there and there's no weld around it, obstructing the, the sort of cleanness of the fit up between the, in the mouth and the tongue. And I think that's, I think that's gonna be the cleanest way and I really like it, how it comes out the face and it. Yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with that. I'm also really happy with how the tails turned out. I think that's a really nice effect having sort of the the end of the tail coming into the fins and gradually fading off that effect that we created by using that hardy box and that's a light. Oh well. <laughs> uh, it's a bit windy today. Let's try again. So I'm really happy with how that tail has turned out. I think that we got a really nice effect in the way that the the tail sort of gradually fades away into the fins and we got that by using that hardy block fudging down into the hardy block to retain sort of some of the shape and that's rather than there being a round bar and then 
a completely flat fin. We still have a bit of definition of the tail fading away into the fins, which I, I really like that as well. That's about it for this video. I've really enjoyed making the Sea Serpent. This is, I've definitely had a lot of fun with this one. I talked about those two design points before, the tongue and the tail, and uh, you know, you think of those in your head and then trying to make them out of steel and then seeing them come together and as you imagine them is, is really cool, you know, actually being able to make things, it's really fun. So thank you for watching the video and I'll catch you on the next one.